We love our dogs and they love us. They protect us and it is our job to protect them. As we enter the hottest time of the year, we need to crank up that protection. There are many ways that our best friends can become injured or even killed when the temperature starts to rise. We're going to go over several ways that you might consider in taking care of your canine friend. Of course, the very first thing that people think about when we talk about heat safety for dogs is when a person leaves their dog in a parked car. The reasons are obvious, but let's take a quick look. In 2015, Tennessee passed a new law that says if a person sees that a dog has been locked in a hot car, that person can break out the window to rescue the animal without repercussions from the owner of the vehicle. Why take such drastic measures? It is literally a matter of life and death. On a 78 degree day, it only takes a few minutes for that temperature to reach 100 degrees in that hot car. And on a hot day, say 90 degrees, in 10 minutes, that temperature can reach 109 degrees. In 15 minutes, the dog can easily sustain a heat stroke, brain damage, and even death. And because of the fact that dogs cannot perspire to cool themselves, it would be a horrible death. Let's think about that 15 minutes. You leave your dog in the car to run inside a store just for a moment. For whatever reason you're in that store, one person being in front of you in a checkout line can hold you up long enough to kill your dog. Just don't ever do it. We see the funny pictures of a dog locked in a car with a sign on the window that says the motor is running, the air conditioner is on, he has water and food, and he's listening to his favorite tunes. It's still crazy to take the chance. If your engine dies, chances are the dog dies. It is never going to be worth it. So we got that settled. No dogs ever left unattended in cars for any reason. Another potential serious problem stems from the fact that dogs don't wear shoes. We've all gone barefoot and we immediately learn where the ground was too hot to walk. Dogs know that they can't walk across a hot surface, but the vast majority of dogs are being walked by their owners and don't get to pick their path. The walker has to pick their path, so pick a good one. Grass is best, and thick grass is better. Avoid paved surfaces, and remember that the darker the color of the surface, the hotter that surface is going to be. If you find yourself in a situation where you have no grassy path, and all of the pavement is dark, you will need to pick the dog up and carry it across the pavement. If your dog has suffered from a paw pad burn, they will let you know. Their paws will be hurting, so they will be showing signs of discomfort, holding up a paw, limping, or vocalizing when they're walking. You may be able to see blisters and redness, and if the injuries look severe, get them to the vet as soon as possible. If you decide that the burn is not severe, you can ease your pet's discomfort and treat the burn by adding witch hazel, then apply an antibiotic ointment. It's all about stopping infection. And finally, do not allow the dog or any of their dog friends to lick the wounds. That may be difficult, but this will cause infection, so the dreaded cone of shame may have to come into play. Another common ailment of dogs in the summer is a sunburn. That's something that we all should understand. Their sunburn is caused the same way our sunburn is caused, and it can be prevented in the same way we protect ourselves: cover up protect the skin from direct sunlight. Sunscreen first. You don't need doggy sunscreen. Human stuff works perfectly. Use a child safe 30 to 50 SPF and apply it according to the instructions for humans. Be generous on the nose, ear, belly, and any shaved areas. If you want to give a long haired dog a cooling haircut for hot weather, don't go less than an inch of fur or the fur will no longer protect the skin. As I said before, dogs don't sweat except through panting, so there is no way for them to cool their bodies naturally, so keep that in mind all summer. Dogs love cooling water in hot weather, whether it be from a water hose or like these pictures taken at Haynesville Pool's yearly dog swim. Here in East Tennessee, we have a lot of wooded areas and dogs love to run in the woods. And in many areas, there are hiking trails that go deep into the woods. 
If you take your dogs on those kinds of adventures, please remember that you are a visitor to those woods. There are many creatures that live in those woods that can be harmed by your dog and can also harm or kill your dog. The most predominant of those creatures is snakes. Snakes are beneficial. They are part of the ecosystem and shouldn't be killed, especially if they aren't on your property. And we do have venomous snakes here. Copperheads and rattlesnakes can be found all over these mountains, so when you unleash your dog to run into the woods, they could very easily be bitten by these snakes and that could kill your dog. Take care of your dog. Keep these tips in mind and let's make this a great summer for everybody and all of our wonderful animal friends.